We're live. Uh, good morning. Welcome to the Growth Infrastructure and Waste Committee of uh, the 7th of 2022. It's the 11th of August 2022. Um, it's uh, one minute past nine and calling attendance uh, that we have Councillor Kunzelman, Councillor Milligan, Councillor Fechner, Councillor Tully, Councillor Jonik and the Deputy Mayor, Councillor Madsen. We also have um, Councillor Island on Teams on, a, on, a, on an audio link, which was approved by Council on the 28th of July this year. Therefore, we don't need to vote for her to be on there because that was already done. Um, and I understand that Council Doyle will be with us in about 15 minutes. Um, I don't have any other apologies. So I'll hand over to Council Kunzelman for a, a welcome to, to an acknowledgement of country. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Ipswich City Council acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land on which we are gathered, acknowledging our gratitude that we share this land today, but also acknowledging the cost of that sharing and our hope that we can move to a place of justice and partnership together and that we welcome further opportunities for engagement. Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Are there any declarations of interest in the matters on the agenda today? No, thank you. Um, business outstanding. We have a response to a petition for the leash-free dog area in Kamira Recreation Park. Um, and the recommendations come back to us, recommendation A, B and C, that the leash-free dog area within the Kamira Recreation Park remain in its current configuration without further expansion, and that further planning be undertaken for the Kamira Recreation Park, including community engagement, to seek the sentiment of sport and recreation needs of the community and that the Chief Petitioner be advised of the outcome of this report. Would anyone like to ask the relevant Council Officer any questions? Yes, please. Thank you. May I ask the relevant Council Officer, please? Good morning, Mayor and Councillors. Uh, Mark Baston, Team Lead, Open Space and Facilities. Thank you, Councillor Johnny. Thank you, um, Mr. Baston. Just querying um, the open space on the south side of the netball courts there at um, the Kamira uh, Sports Grounds, um, is there an opportunity to uh, place a small dog, lease free dog park there within our policy provisions? Um, if it's set back from the residential areas by that 50 metre mark? Uh, unfortunately, in terms of the available space, you wouldn't achieve the 500 metres. Uh, and then given the proximity then to Sandy Creek, we have nominal offsets as well. Uh, so it is constrained in that space. Okay. So in keeping with the, I guess, the policy requirements, then the dog park there itself and the netball courts are not actually? Technically they're not in terms of, but in the original uh, leash free dog area was built prior to the policy. Right. Uh, so do you have any um, suggestions, I guess, for uh, making that small area available for uh, small I dogs? I guess we stand by the recommendations in the report. Um, subject to, I guess, with uh, Springfield Central Sports Complex, the needs in terms of with the netball, understanding all that, and that flow-on effect in terms of then the need for the netball courts. And then if we were to look at um, demolishing the netball courts, we need to engage with the broader community in terms of then the needs. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, sorry, was it 50 metres or 500 metres away from uh, the... 50, 50, 50 metres, yeah. And that's from the boundary. From the... The fence line? Yes. Okay. And so, sorry, how big does the dog park, small dog park have to be if it's separated? It is desirable. You're looking at uh, 500 square metres. 500 square metres. So that could be in any number of configuration in terms of, I guess, a uh, 20 by uh, so match. Uh, there's different examples around the city. Okay, I'm just doing up some scoping now on new maps and I can actually 
fit that in. I know that Sandy Creek is adjacent, but I know that there's repair works that need to be done from on that fence line that borders the netball courts um, anyway. The last time I went out there it was um, knocked over because of the, the floods. Yeah, I, b I believe the rectification works are yet to occur. Uh, it's also understanding too you would want a nominal offset if the netball courts were reactivated for formalised sport. You, you'd want at least probably five metres. Okay. And that's, so again, it's a highly constrained area. Mm. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Mr Baston? No, thank you very much, oh, Mr Baston. Thank you. I'll move this so we can get into discussion about the matter, if that's okay. So I'll move that. Do I have a seconder? That. Thank you, Councillor Johnny. I'll open up for discussion. Can I just uh, kick off just preliminary comments that I think probably there's a bit of a dichotomy here. It was a council officer who recommended to the resident to put in a petition, um, which I think gave them false hope. And I've already previously raised the appropriateness of, of that anyway, because um, it leads to these sorts of situations that they thought that that was a, a good indication that... Uh, something positive would come out of this. Uh, this arose, uh, I think, about a year ago where uh, one resident contacted me and I think Councillor mm -hmm. Johnick in relation to um, larger dogs um, biting and attacking uh, the smaller dogs in that um, uh, triangular area, um, mm -hmm. and that was of concern. It's always going to be a small, smallish, off-leash dog park. I just think there, there might be some alternatives... Um, I don't know we can fashion a, uh, an appropriate um, amendment today, but um, if we can't, I'd, I'd like to see this um, lie on the table and you know, for other consideration to, yeah. to take yeah. it forward. And I think, Councillor, I think I raised with you earlier, that was, I note in the documentation that on page 15 um, that there was a service request back in 2017 that's been closed requesting more shade and for some trees to be planted. Um, that's not in our Capital Works program from... 2022 to 2025, and I understand to plant those trees would cost about $3,700. So I guess I'm looking at how we can address the, the concerns that are being raised by those residents as well. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Um, so I know that it's fairly busy, this dog park, and I know there's been a number of uh, attacks on smaller dogs now. It's, um, it's definitely a, a popular dog park park um, and it's mixed with the the larger breeds and then mm. the smaller breeds um, and it's kind of a networking environment for the, the local residents to go down there and take their smaller dogs down there mm. um, I don't want to take away a facility mm. uh, like the netball courts especially when we've got um, considerations at the southern sports fields um, uh, so it is a little bit of a a tricky situation, mm -hmm. but I think that it needs um, further deliberation. Yep. I, I do know that recommendation B is that further planning be undertaken for the Kamira Recreation Park, including community engagement. Perhaps we could put a time frame on that so it doesn't drag out. I've... Yeah, I'm open to that, ma'am. Yep. Because I took to the CEO, what would be a is, is three months, four months? What's feasible? Can I just clarify what that means? Is that in relation to all all current and potential uses uh, of that area, um, or or just looking at the off leash? Up, up to up to us, Councillor Tully. Yeah, but the the, the recommendation, recommendation doesn't specify. Yeah, well, it just says sport and recreation needs of the community there, doesn't it? So. Yeah. I think because of the netball courts, because if it goes to expand, it'll take away three of the six netball courts. So I think you have to yeah. include uh, the people that are using the netball courts as well. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just feel um, perhaps that uh, yeah, it needs you know, a fresh set of eyes, fresh consideration. So, um, yeah, rather than just moving into that directly into that engagement mm -hmm. and, you know, even if we specified a cut-off date, I think we just... Need, need to sit down and um, offline and um, work our way forward with this to see if there's a, okay. a suitable solution. So I'll I'll I'll, do, I'll move that this this matter lie on the table. Okay.
Are you happy, for, I just look, as, as the fellow divisional council, are you happy to, to second that? Um, yep, thank you. Any other discussion on the matter lying on the table? No, just, oh, uh, I guess um, it would be wise to engage with the sport and rec um, for future um, sport and rec options there so that we're not leaving a legacy issue. Mm. Um, okay, if there's no other discussion, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chamber. Council Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you, it's unanimous and carried. Thank you. Put July on the table. We'll move on to item two, which is another response to a petition for the opening of, of River Road at Bundamba to traffic at its intersection with Nelson Street. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this matter? Yes, Council Fechner, thank you. May I speak to the relevant council officer? Uh, good morning, everyone. Josh Ellis, Principal Engineer, Traffic Operations. Thank you, Mr Ellis. Councillor Fechner? Um, thanks, Mr Ellis, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with the um, development approvals around the area, so a couple of these questions might need to be deferred to PRS. Um, but in opening, um, you know, from a traffic management perspective, there's two major issues um, with, the with the reopening of River Road North. Um, and, and in the report, it cited um, driver behaviour and heavy vehicle movements. Um, do we have any quantitative data to support what those movements would actually look like or what historically they did prior to the road being closed? I, ca I can't talk to the historic stuff when the road was previously open, but I can talk to, I guess, where it is now. The, at the current state, River Road, in its closed form, we have got a high request number for speeding issues. Uh, hence why there's speed awareness signs on there as a way to try and address that. Uh, it is a concern and at the moment without the heavy vehicle access, that's the, the heavy vehicles is zero. The potential is that if you do open it, that can change because they have an access point and there's limitations in what you can restrict and how restrict heavy vehicles. Mm -hmm. B-doubles can be restricted quite easily because they're permits, but anything to semi-trailers, you can't. They can drive on any road technically uh, without permits. So. There is a concern, and most the community in particular can uh, mix up B-doubles with semis quite easily. Um, so they could think that they're heavy vehicles B-doubles, but technically they could be semis and they're allowed on there. So there is a concern, but at, part of the process with development is that every land use that comes into that industrial estate will do a development application as well uh, for that land use, and it'll have the traffic impacts done as well. Um, and if River Road's open, they'll, they'll have an option to then think of using River Road as an house which will alleviate some of the pressures on the other sides of the network where they may do mm. uh, assessments as well. So just something to be conscious of, but uh, the historic data I can't speak to. Yep, um, and I note that some consultation was taken with urban utilities um, just to gauge what their movements are. Um, and uh, the report says it could receive up to 100, 100 tanker filling trucks a day. Um, do we actually know the direction those trucks are presently travelling from? Are they are they coming off the highway and down Archer Street? I, so the consultation was prior to this petition. It was the petition before with and them. We, so we don't have any information so we don't have any around new the, stuff, the, no. those actual movements. No. Um, you know, I, I agree that um, at, at the present time it wouldn't be the right thing to open the road, um, but noting the development that's, you know, planned down there in the future and what's currently happening with the construction of Warner Road and, and, and I understand that um, this has been mentioned in the report. Um, it would be the view of the department not to re-interrogate this or reinvestigate this because there is a council resolution withstanding that says that this remain closed in perpetuity. So for, for this to even be a consideration of traffic planning, um, you know, from a departmental level, would the council resolution, you know, have to be revisited before the, before the department would actually take action to reinvestigate or reinterrogate the opening of River Road? I guess I wouldn't know, be able to answer on the, the resolution side of things. I can only talk to the technical, so 
there is an outstanding resolution, obviously. CEO, to keep it would that preclude them from taking undertaking um, investigative works to reopen? Mm, sorry, through the chair. Oh, I wouldn't have thought so. So no. Okay, even though there's a council resolution that says that it should be closed and remain so in perpetuity. If information comes to light that you know warrants that being reinvestigated, then that can happen mm -hmm. and those technical considerations can be given and then a matter would be brought forward, a report be brought forward to council to consider Great. revising their decision. Thank you. Um, because I note in, in the report, and, and I might be getting into PRS territory here, but the Kataba Homes approval, which I understand has been shelved for a number of years, um, eventually that would allow through access to Bognuda Street um, and then inadvertently we're we're creating a rat run, e even though the report says that it's intended for local traffic only, um, the temptation is always there, uh, you know, to escape through a rat run. So we're not potentially creating a future problem in the development of the Catawba Homes if the Nelson Street outlet um, decides to go through the Catawba Homes development um, to end up on Bognuda Street anyway. Great question. Like, reviewing the development plans and from a traffic perspective, the way the road layout has been done as part of that approval it isn't the straight, most straightforward Yeah, I've, I've, I've reviewed it. So um, I, it, I don't believe it will. I think it'll be a local catchment thing, not necessarily a broader catchment thing, which is where this will open up if you do open River Road, because you'll get a lot more traffic from the broader catchment as well as the local catchment, mm. whereas the Catawba Homes development will only really open it up for the locals, which is, I think, a, a positive. One of the things to be conscious of is that the way the development approvals have occurred have been with the, the old resolution and it's a good outcome in keeping the residential from the industrial separate. I agree. And we have a lot of developments where we haven't done that well <laughs> and we missed the opportunity. So there's a concern, I guess, from a traffic and departmentally review that you, you'll open it up and you'll cause these issues and they cause a worse outcome. So it is a balancing act and mm. there is a potential <clears throat> that in the future you may revisit this after time and yeah. that, that's probably a better way to do it. And I guess that's what I wanted to encapsulate in yeah. the messaging back to the petitioner saying that right now this this is actually a great solution for us to, ha to have it closed and you know, it only takes one glance at the current near map satellite imaging to understand that it's a good thing that we're not pushing cars down there. We know Archer Street is not properly formed. It's a dangerous place for local traffic to be traversing. But, you know, thinking about what it what it might look like in one or two or three years time, you know, once Warner Road's been established, once we understand what the urban utilities and Veolia truck movements are down there, it's probably worth having a, a look at again. And it's probably worth um, I guess injecting some of that optimism in, in into our response to that petitioner. Would you Absolutely. agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the Archer Street as part of the construction works at the moment is getting closed off. Yes. And then the new Warner Road opportunity will be there. Better opportunity. The roads have been constructed on Hume Drive, which will be better quality as well. Um, and it'll be also good to see what the industrial developments bring along because they may bring things that may not be a high traffic demand, which reduces that risk of that rate running. Amazing. Yeah. So Absolutely agree, yeah. Um, awesome. And I, I don't take it that you would know, but um, the approvals that are currently um, in place for Walkers and Catawba, if you, if, do you know if there are any contributions as part of their approval, um, you know, by way of conditions imposed on them to upgrade River Road north of Nelson? Uh, so there are no conditions. The way the conditions currently work is with the Catawba in particular, they actually cul-de-sac it at the north end um, and they don't have to do any frontage works, which is usually the so case in fronting. So that there is no works on River Road, which is... So if it does change, council will have to pick up that yeah. tab. Okay. Um, and then the, the industrial estate actually has no conditions relating to River Road because it's been planned around not opening it. Yeah, I, I, I figured as much, um, just being optimistic about council's financial yeah. position. <laughs> Um, thanks, Mr. Ellis. I appreciate it. No worries. Any other questions for Mr. Ellis? No, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. I'll move recommendations A and B. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Fickner. We'll move into discussion. I guess following off what you said, Councillor Fickner. Um, I note from the petitioner, they, they've made a statement that the end of River Road has remained closed for several years despite a promise of additional thoroughfares. 
And I can just see that since 2015, certainly there's been nothing for River Road to, to open up. And I also note um, Patricia talked about that uh, Hume Drive is, has been closed. I think it's been closed since February and that will open up in November as well. It's just been delayed because of weather. Potentially not November, Mayor. Sorry? Potentially not November. Oh, okay. I was it told this week it'd be late November. <laughs> Do you know when that's open? No, I haven't been advised, but I understand they're suffering significant delays down there. Right. Okay. Okay, well, on... Um, okay, three days ago, I believe the council that, told yeah, me it was late that's what their current That's, that's what yeah. the current approval says. Right. Um, they've got an operational works approval, um, and they've said that the, the completion of that work would be around November. Mm -hmm. um, however, I've had anecdotal evidence, right. you know, talking to residents down there okay. who inadvertently have been speaking with contractors there and they're foreshadowing greater blowout. So right. uh, I'm, I'm currently um, okay. working with the department to ascertain a, a, a proper timeline so that we can be okay. informing our residents ahead of time if there are going to be significant delays. So. It's all unknown. That's what their current approval says. That 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 advice is currently correct. But you know, I've got a gut feeling that it okay. might blow out. Thank you, Councillor Fickner. Any other discussion on the matter? Um, yeah, just yes. um, this is something that's um, always very interesting for um, the people in our Bundamba catchment, um, and often it seems like one of those quick fix solutions um, to open it up. Um, the road up there is in 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 significant need of repair, as outlined in the report. Um, it would require significant investment from council. I'm not saying that we would shy away from that, but considering the current state of affairs there, I, I support the position to keep it closed. Um, and I was hoping to, um, and ma maybe we, um, maybe if it's all right, CEO, that, that the letter that's going to be sent back to the petitioner um, come to both Councillor Doyle and myself one last time to, to peruse to see what that official response would be to the petitioner, um, just mm -hmm. to ensure that yeah, we... certainly, of course. Thank you. Um, no, so, you know, and, and there's, been a, the, there's been a lot of movement down there. There's actually going to be a new road constructed. I mean, it was always... Uh, I, I was always against reopening it if we were forcing people to use Archer Street. Um, which is a horrible road that was nothing more than a driveway and not built to council's technical standards because it was meant to be used as a service road to service the urban utilities in, in Veolia um, plant um, down the end there. So, um, you know, if new information comes to light, I think that we should take every opportunity to investigate it, um, you know, if we, if we have the chance. Thank you, Councillor Fitnick. Councillor Kunzelman? Uh, just a correction on page 58. It says it's Division 4. I think it was old Division Four, Councillor Kunzelman. Well, that might have been Kylie's idea. Yes, I think it was. Yeah. yeah, so that's a back then on that paper. Yeah. So there were about to be correction. Oh, okay. It was Thank Division you. Four. Yes. I, I appreciate that. I know because I used to be in that division as well. Yeah. <laughs> Any other discussion? In that case, I put the matter to the vote. Those in favour of recommendation A and B, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chamber. Council Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you very much, Council Island. <laughs> Thank you. It's, um, it's carried. We now move on to item three, which is the Redbank Plains Library Additional Community Meeting Space. It's a response to a notice of motion. Um, and there's a re report on a response to notice of motion uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Jacob Madsen on the 19th of May, uh, that does a design be prepared and costed for a conversion of the former mobile library garage at Redbank Plains Library and with said design to focus on delivery of community meeting space with after hours access, as well as external landscaping to allow appropriate pathways to after hours access and used by community on special occasions. The recommendations at the report on the um, Redbank Plains at library additional community sp meeting space uh, response to notice of motion be received and the contents noted. So, Mayor, would you like to speak to any relevant council officers on this? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I'd actually like to move that it's tabled for a month as um, Councillor Island's been away and there's some further conversations we'd like to have before moving on with the matter. I know that it's a receive and note, but there's some yeah. associated materials that we probably sure. need to gather for a more enlightened discussion yeah. in a month's time. So, you'd like to lay it on the table? Yes. Thank you. I have moved that. Okay, moved. Mayor. Um, council Island, I'll just check with you as a fellow divisional council. Are you happy to second that? 
Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any discussion on that? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chamber. Councillor Ireland, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you. The matter's laid on the table. We move on to item four, which is mm. the Deeming Heights Heritage yeah, yeah, yeah. Centre. Um, and it's uh, the report be noted and the no further action be required on this matter at this time. May I ask for the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? Morning, Mayor and Councillors. Peter Tabulo, General Manager of Planning and Regulatory Services. Thank you, Mr Tabulo. I note this report is basically saying due to a change of ownership, we now have to wait for the, a new developer mm -hmm. to work through this. Is there anything that Council can do to move it along or progress it? Um, not at this stage, Mayor. We're really in the in the hands of the of the developer when they're ready to progress that. Um, as I say in the report, they're, they're aware of the situation. They've had meetings with the um, Indigenous parties, mm -hmm. um, but it's not their priority at the present time. So once um, they're ready to progress that stage of the of the development, um, they'll come back and speak to Council. Okay. Thank you, Mr Tabula. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr Tabula. I'll move this recommendation. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Fechner. Any discussion? In that case, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chamber. Councillor Ireland, how do you vote? Affirm affirmative. Thank you. That's passed. We'll now move on to the confirmation of minutes, item number five. And the first minutes that we'll be looking to confirm are the Growth Infrastructure and Waste Committee um, minutes from the 14th of July. And I'll move those. Do I have a seconder for those? I'm looking at the, my deputy. Councillor Tully, would you like to second those? <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion on those minutes? No, I'll put the minutes to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you, it's unanimous in the chamber. And how do you vote, Council Island? Affirmative. Thank you, it's unanimous and carried. We'll now move on to the officers' reports. And the first one is the Ipswich General Cemetery Heritage Project concept design. Um, and its recommendation is that the report be received and the contents noted. Uh, would anyone like to speak to the Relevant Council Officer on this um, paper? No? In that case, I'll move this recommendation. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Council Kunzelman. I'll move into discussion. I, I just have a query, um, Mayor, in relation to this, the recommendation be received and noted. Does that, that sort of implies that, that that's the end of the matter? If we're just noting it, there, there is, it, is anything further going to happen? Yeah, so they're recommending that the concept of design is the memorial garden. There were three um, designs put forward for consultation with related parties oh. and others. Just and it talks about the, the fact that there's already been money allocated um, in 2022-23 as well as 23-25 for the construction. I think that should be incorporated or, or uh, words uh, mm -hmm. re reflecting that recorded would, in the recommendation because yeah. the recommendation like doesn't do anything. Okay. It just receives and notes the report. Yeah. Would you like to put forward a, a different recommendation, Councillor Tully? Uh, well, I'm happy that uh, that becomes paragraph A of the report, be received and noted. And B, and I might need the assistance of you and or others and or the CEO um, to to reflect um, how it's going to be brought, um, continued or uh, further the, developed. Yeah, that the I guess that the um, the concept design of the memorial garden is proceeds. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, I think it needs something simple. Something yeah, like I'd that. Be happy yeah, just to include something that. from that second last paragraph. Yeah. yeah. Conclusion. Um, and B, that council. Um, Proceed with developing a final concept design and cost so, esti estimates for the memorial garden design. That council proceed with. Yeah, this is directly from that paragraph. Yeah. Ah, right. 
So that, um, yeah, just from the words to pre council proceed with, this, this is from that second last paragraph, and then just to the uh, word design. It doesn't need that final sentence about the uh, encapsulation. Oh, to proceed with developing a final concept design and cost estimates for the memorial garden, garden design. design. Yes. So, Vicky, council proceed. So, I'll take away take away the two words of the design. So, proceed with developing a final concept. Design and cost estimates for the memorial garden design. For the memorial garden. Can we capitalise memorial and garden, please? As the mover, I'm happy with that. Uh, Councillor Kunzman, as a second, are you happy, happy with? Yep, thank you, Councillor Tully. Any other discussion? And I'll just check with the CEO. Yep. Could I just make a general comment yeah, about reports, do. just generally, yes. not only this one, just to receive a note that if there is a, a, another progress to to occur, I think it's better for the community to understand that it's not just received and noted and filed away, yeah. that there is um, action um, proposed. Yes. I also note on page 109, it says the Genealogical Society. It should be the Ipswich Genealogical Society. And I think there's been quite a considered um, project by the organisation, dealing with a lot of related parties. Um, and I think it'll be a, a big improvement on the on the cemetery there. Councillor Fickner? Yeah, I just want to thank the project team. Um, uh, we've been um, thoroughly briefed along the way and it's been interesting and exciting um, and certainly insightful. Um, a lot of time and care has gone into prospective designs. Uh, we met yourself, myself, Councillor Tully, um, to consider these designs. It's an important cemetery. Um, and lots of people in, um, certainly in Division 3, um, consider this not to be of standard in its current state. So um, these works um, will be beautiful um, and will be well considered. There's a lot of time and effort that's gone into understanding um, the history of the cemetery. And, and I really want to thank the team for that because, yeah. you know, it, it is a bit of a tricky thing at times to reconfigure or to do works in the cemetery and the team has taken absolutely every measure to ensure that they're being respectful um, at all times um, and I just think yeah it, it, it's really wonderful you, you see the pictures there you see the designs that that we've been shown um, it'll be a great way to showcase a really important part yeah. of our city's history so um, I support this project and I'm so pleased that it's been funded. Thank you Councillor Fickner. Any other discussion? Put recommendations A and B to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the room. And um, Council Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you very much. It's unanimous and carried. We're now moving to item seven, which is personal tributes in Council's open space and road network. It's assessment of an application. So it's um, the recommendation is that the personal tribute as noted in the application is detailed in attachment one be approved by Council. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this? No? In that case, I will move that recommendation. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Council Kunzelman. Would anyone like to speak to this recommendation? Which is a tribute for um, Mr Murray Kendrick. Um, Mayor, may I speak? Yes, please do, Council Island. Um, Earlier this year, um, Mrs uh, Kendrick and her daughter attended our condolences uh, uh, at the council meeting. And at the time, she um, queried whether or not there was some way that the family could have her husband's work for the community established. And um, I'm very pleased to see that we have acknowledged the good work that he's done, both through other organisations and through council, um, by allowing them to uh, erect this plaque. Thank you, Councillor Island. And um, the application, I think, um, 
it is very clear that Mr Kendrick has contributed, who's born and raised here in Ipswich, has contributed, contributed significantly uh, to our community and our city um, as, as, um, as an architect and other, other ways and building design services across our, our city, including the design of the Nerima Gardens Bridge as well. Um, I do note that normally we would look at things, um, as you, there's usually a 12 month period um, after the passing of the person and the council has recommended that we uh, waiver this particular thing and I'm, very, I'm, I'm supportive of that as well. Is there any other discussion? Um, although it's included in the documents in the pack, I think it's um, worth just calling out mm. um, the end of the letter where it says to pay tribute to his life and design legacy. We would like to have a plaque placed at the bridge within the Narima Gardens, which Murray designed. I think that's so wonderful. Yeah. Um, he was proud of the bridges and he used to visit them often. We'd love for visitors to the garden to see Murray's name when admiring the surrounds and walking across the bridges. Um, very wholesome, so I speak mm -hmm. in support of this. Thank you, Councillor Vickner. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and that's in the, in the chambers. Councillor Ireland, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you very much. It's unanimous and carried. We we'll now move on to item eight, which is the um, Red Bank Plains Road Stage Three upgrade, and it's a report concerning the recommendation to vary the civil works, um, civil construction works um, contract with all roads as per attachment one. And there's recommendations A, B, and C. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this? No. In that case, I will move this report. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Tully. Any discussion on this report? Thank you, thank you Councillor Tully. Just very briefly, uh, Mayor, I think the report, the report speaks for itself in relation to the financial issues affecting uh, local government um, and the people of Australia generally um, and, and the uh, rising costs uh, even of projects which are um, partially underway as this one is. It um, shows the great difficulties um, we the other 76 councils in Queensland will f continue to face for some time um, because of escalating <coughs> prices and um, it, it's one of those very difficult issues and it will, in my view, will probably um, affect our coming budgets for at least the next two, three <coughs> or four years and um, it's one of those very difficult situations that um, pretty well everything we do is money. Um, that any government does mm. at any level is it all come always uh, comes back to money. So I'm supportive of it because it's a, a much needed upgrade from the uh, Kruger roundabout um, through to the Red Bank Plains uh, shopping centre. So I, I certainly support that. Thank you very much, Councillor Tully. Any other discussion? Mayor, may I speak? Yes, please do, Councillor Island. Um, I'd also like to um, see this um, project proceed, the residents have been extremely patient and the road is falling to pieces and intersections are falling to pieces. So we're just doing patch up jobs that only, if it rains only last for a very short period of time. Um, it's a major road and so it, it will be good to see it progress. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Island. Any other discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chamber. Council Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. We'll now move on to item nine, which is the adoption of the updated construction, repair and property access policy. And the recommendation is that the revised policy titled construction and repair of property access policy, as detailed in attachment five, be adopted. Would anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this matter? Yes, please, just to clarify. Yes, thank you. May uh, I have a little bit, Council Officer, please? <coughs> Morning, Mayor, Councillors and CEO. Thank you. I'm Cameron Hoger, Works Manager, Works Field Services. So what was your name again, sorry? Cameron Hoger. Thank you, Mr. Hoger. Uh, Councillor Tully? I'm just, I just want to, 
I, I think I understand the uh, multiplicity of um, documentation for this report. It's the track changes. There's, um, this is on page 181. Um, am I right in understanding that what's tracked in red and crossed out, that's gone, and what's in yellow is um, just for information? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So have you, have you got the new policy in front of you? Yeah, but... Yeah, that's, that's the next document, I think, on page 183. Um, yeah, so in essence, it's just aligning the, the, what's on the local laws and the driveway fact sheet um, mm -hmm. to, to make sure that landowners are aware that the responsibility of driveways are their responsibility. Because previously, it was council um, were undertaking 0.5 construction or maintenance with the first 0.5 of their driveways. So that was just to align that to make it clear for landowners. So the actual crossover itself, the, the section uh, A to be deleted, um, indicates that council is responsible for, for a short uh, distance, 0.5 of a metre on the invert. So that's disappearing. That's correct. Yeah. OK. That's all. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr Hogan? Oh, yes. yes, sorry. Um, thank you, Mr Hogan. Is that in line with other council's policies? Yes. Yep. yes. And are we far behind, like time frame wise, on that? Is it? Yeah, something... it's an old policy that, and that local law was updated in 2017, so yeah. it should have been done then. And we're just aligning that through good governance now. So. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hager. I'll move this recommendation. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Tully. Any other discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chambers. Councillor Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you, Councillor Island. Unanimous and carried. Moving to item 10, which is the adoption of the updated graffiti removal policy. And the recommendation is that the revised policy titled graffiti removal policy, as detailed in attachment three, be adopted. Would anyone like to, anyone like to speak to the relevant council officer on this policy? No? In that case, I will move this paper. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Fechner. Any discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chamber. Councillor Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you very much. It's carried. We'll move on to item 11, which is the Infrastructure and Environment Department Capital Delivery Report. And the recommendation that the report be received and contents noted. Would anyone have any questions for the relevant council officer on this? No, in that case, I will move this paper. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Council Quinsman. Any discussion? No, I think the report was very self explanatory. I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous in the chamber. How do you vote, Council Island? Affirmative. Thank you very much. It's unanimous and carried. We move on to item 12, which is the exercise of delegation report. And the recommendation that the report be received and the contents noted. Does anyone have any questions of the relevant council officer on this matter? No, in that case, I will move the delegation report. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Council Kunzelman. Any discussion? Okay, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you, it's unanimous and uh, in, the, in the chamber. Uh, Council Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you very much, it's unanimous and carried. We'll now move on to item 13, which is the Planning Environment Court Action Status Report. And the recommendation that the report be received and contents noted. Uh, may I ask for the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? Good morning, Mayor and Councillors. Anthony Bowles, Acting Development Planning Manager. Mr. Bowles, are you able to give us an update at all on the, um, the, the, the land track BMI? Uh, unfortunately, no um, update. Um, um, in this morning's uh, Ipswich News today, it reported that the, the we're going to hear from the court sometime in September. Uh, 
Uh, that would be anything? for the um, hearing for the um, the judicial review applications. Oh, so it's the it's one a separate matter. Okay. Yeah, so unfortunately, no, um, that won't be the judgment for. Well, it may be, um, but I can't guarantee that'll be the judgment for the appeals. Okay, so no word on when we'll be. I'm afraid not. No. Okay. Does anyone else have any other questions for Mr. Bowles? No, thank you very much, Mr. Bowles. Thank you. I move that this report. I move this report. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Fechner. Any discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous in the in the chamber. Councillor Island, how do you vote? Affirmative. Thank you. It is um, unanimous and carried. Um, there are nil notices of motion. There are no matters arising. I don't have any procedural motions or formal matters. So I will finish this meeting at 9.47 a.m. Um, just checking before we adjourn. Normally it's a 10 minute adjourn, but knowing how close it is to 10 o'clock, I'm just I'm seeking Will we do a 30 minute adjournment or? Okay. For the next one. <laughs> That's right. So before we go to the G G and T committee. Yeah. Okay. I'm proposing that we don't. Yeah. I'm proposing that we adjourn. Oh, we, we come back for the GT at at ten at twenty uh, a.m. Okay. May I put that to the vote? Those in favour? Or don't yeah, know? Leave I, it I need is. to raise a point. Okay. There was a, a committee meeting. There was a. Okay. No, but the, oh, okay. We'll okay. come back in well, ten minutes' time. Easy. But there was a committee meeting. <laughs> yes. That's 10 minutes. Okay. So we'll leave it as it is. We come back in 10 minutes. Yeah. The, and the 30 minutes. Okay. The, oh, my suggestion is we come back at 10.20. That's a suggestion. Thank you very much.